Now, if the passenger jet was shot down, there are only a limited number of weapons in the region that could have been responsible. One possibility is the Buk surface to air missile system. Several former Soviet countries use the weapon, including Ukraine. It has the ability to hit up to 24 targets at the same time within a distance of 45 kilometers and reaching an altitude of 25 kilometers. Its missiles travel at up to 1200 meters per second, but as yet there is no confirmation that this weapon system was the cause of the crash. Okay, let's try and bring in former UK Army officer Charles Shoebridge. Mr. Shoebridge, the Buk missile system is believed to have been used to down the plane. Does it seem likely to you that this is the case? Well, certainly it would be a plausible explanation for uh, the airliner falling out of the sky. But we must uh, remember that, uh, sadly, uh, it's a fact of life that airliners do of their own volition and for a very great number of reasons drop out of the sky. And of course, Malaysian Airlines, airlines is one of the uh, airlines that most recently and tragically uh, is aware of that. Having said that, the Ukraine government has released what um, it claims are a number of uh, evidential leads. For example, it has said that it um, uh, intercepted communications, it says, between people on the ground that suggested that rebels were firing or had fired or uh, weapons. And also, um, Ukraine government has in the past said that um, the rebels have these weapon systems. I should point out that, of course, the Ukraine government claims are as yet uncorroborated in respect of these uh, intercepted transmissions. Uh, and also, of course, um, uh, the prosecutor general himself, uh, my, uh, my understanding, is, is today reported from Ukraine to have denied yeah, that the rebels have this system. So it's fair to say there's a lot of confusion at the moment. And really, this uh, really points the way to the importance of a thoroughly uh, independent um, and indeed thorough investigation to uncover all of the leads in this case uh, to establish, first of all, whether the plane was shot down and mm. secondly, uh, which party may have been yeah. responsible. Well, that's what I want to continue with, because is it possible to establish with any certainty where the missile came from to clarify whether it was launched by the army or opposition militia? Well, one could say from the outset, uh, with um, some investigation, uh, the area of ground from which it was uh, launched. And of course, that would give an indication, even though it's accepted, I think that uh, East much of East Ukraine is in a fluid situation in terms of who controls what at any given time. But certainly uh, radar tracking, um, looking at the records of that, uh, looking at, again, as the Ukraine government claims it has already done, looking at transmissions from parties on the ground. Uh, and indeed, there may even be satellite evidence that parties such as the United States or even perhaps drone evidence that other parties might have. Um, uh, for example, Russia might have itself some evidence as to uh, where the launch took place. But again, none of this is publicly available at the moment. And anything suggesting to the contrary, I think, is, is speculation. Um, it's also true, of course, that forensic analysis of the wreckage may indeed identify uh, traces of explosives, uh, such as might have been used in an anti-aircraft weapon system of this type. And even perhaps uh, if um, uh, a, a collision between, for example, an aircraft and an anti-aircraft missile took place, there may be um, remains to be found of the anti-aircraft missile itself, uh, which may yield information such as serial numbers and so on um, as to uh, the origins of it. And indeed, that may explain in whose hands that missile system was. But I would emphasize that these kind of investigations take a very long time. They're very painstaking. They have to be independent and to be seen as such. And um, really, uh, the results of such invest investigations um, aren't typically uh, made available uh, within days. Usually, it's, of course, a period of months. Charles Shoebridge, former British Army officer, thanks for your expertise this hour.